Evening, everybody. It's uh, 541, and this is your closing comment for tonight, Thursday, the 8th, and it is video number 1442. And I'm going to go a little off topic here um, a bit, uh, because I really want to make an impression on everyone about what's going on in the commodities. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Commodities don't trade like stocks. Uh, sometimes they do, they trend, sometimes they chop around. Um, but what happens is when a commodity is in a, in a trend, one way or the other, it tends to hold that trend. And that's one of the reasons why Dennis has been complaining to me about the gold, because it doesn't really trade the way that gold used to trade or usually trades where you get a little bit of momentum. You know, uh, yesterday it was up, today it was down. The day before it was up, the day before that it was down hard. And so um, it's a completely non-correlated asset and it just doesn't act. Now, I'm going to mention our esteemed Fed chairman who gave quite an interview to the Cato Institute this morning and gave that uh, big speech uh, last Friday. And I want to point something out. These guys have been wrong. You want to know why they're wrong? It's simple. They don't go food shopping and they're driven around in limousines in Washington and they don't go to the gas station and take out their credit card to fill it up. They don't have a clue. What I will tell you, though, is that uh, if you really look at what Jay Powell has been doing for the last six months, he's been talking the market down and interest rates up. Yes, we had 75. Yes, we had 75 before. Probably we'll have 75 or 50 again. But the fact of the matter is the short end of the curve has moved fairly dramatically because of the actual rate rises. But the long end, although it's inverted, also has risen. What he's trying to do is to talk this issue so that he doesn't have to actually raise rates as much as you or I would expect. The upside of that, of course, is if real rates remain anywhere near where they are, um, you're going to have a government that has mountains of debts and continued poor fiscal responsibility and can't afford rates to go dramatically higher. Inflation is here. It's going to stay here. Some of the futures markets have already started back up. The wheat market, let's change this. The wheat market has been consolidating down here after a huge drop. I mean, yes, it was up dramatically. Let's go to a weekly five here. Okay. Yes, we did go. We broke out here at $6 a bushel and we ran to almost $14 a bushel, thirteen sixty three. And yes, we came down from 13 and a half down here to seven and a half. But look at what's happened down here. All of a sudden, we've been going sideways. And remember, this is a weekly. Let me spread this out a little for you. We spent almost a quarter consolidating here. And now it looks like we're headed higher. If we go through this close on a Friday above, uh, what's this number? Uh, 891, you're going to see $11 a bushel again, and you could see higher. 
um, another market that has acted like this, the corn. Same kind of situation. Yes, it went from, you know, three and a half dollars up to seven and a half dollars, came down and consolidated and then worked its way right back up to a new high at eight and a quarter, came down hard and fast and has now spent five, 10, 12 weeks, also almost a quarter. It's built this consolidation. It's broken above it. And I think you're going to see seven and a half dollars again. This is the way that futures trade. These guys have no clue and they're aiming. You know, you go back to the Trump years and he considered the Dow Jones Industrial Average as his report card. These guys are happy to see the market down and that bubble burst, but it hasn't burst yet. And these futures are not done on the upside. So I'm just reminding you all that uh, these, these markets are not correlated to the same thing as the Dow. Yes, you know, they raise interest rates and the dollar goes higher as the interest rates go higher. And, and that's a long term relationship. The gold doesn't act well, uh, but the silver is beginning to act substantially better than that. If you saw in my Sunday letter the fact that the long term average for Gold versus silver is roughly 60 to 1 on Friday of last week. That closed at 97 to 1. So when I see a day like today where gold was actually down $7.5, but silver was up 18 cents, which is a full 1%, I look at that and I see that relationship. Dennis spends hours and hours and hours on this stuff. He trades into the night. He uses stops. If you are not trading futures, I'm telling you, it's difficult to make money. Now, uh, Dennis was uh, sick last month and had kind of a quiet month. Didn't do a lot of trading. But this month, we're up 12%. Doesn't seem like very much. But, you know, if you make 12% a month, by the end of the year, you're up 150%. And there are tax advantages. So, you know, if you're not trading any of these futures or you're not trading any of the ETFs related to these futures, you should let me know and I'll make an introduction. Okay, so uh, also in Sunday's letter, uh, I said to everyone that I thought Tuesday would be a down day. Remember, I wrote that on Saturday. Um, and Tuesday was going to be a down day and we were going to turn back up higher, which we did. And then we extended again today. Uh, we closed, I was looking for 40, 50 as, uh, an area that I thought we could get up to. Here's the chart on the S and P. And we came right down into the support, could not break this week, made a slightly lower low on that down Tuesday. And here we are back up at 40.05. 40.50 is right here. It's right around the corner. I think we could get to 40.75 or even 41.00. So there you go. All right. Uh, earnings today, DocuSign beat, as did Zscaler. DocuSign is currently trading 68.23. That's up 13.10. Uh, Zscaler is trading at around 171, and that is up uh, 24. Um, and uh, there were a couple of others I mentioned. You know, I've been talking about this uh, SHPS. That's... Uh, Shuttle Pharmaceuticals, they're the one with the cancer drug, and they were a new issue at $5 a week and a half ago. Uh, stock traded as high as 46. Uh, 
and uh, today it closed after trading 37 it closed at thirty dollars and 76 cents and that was down 564 i'm not saying that you should be trading this i'm just saying there is a lot of activity in these there's another one pixie which is pixie shift this is a temp agency for lack of a better way of putting it this has been one of those huge destruction of equity and i'll tell you why i say that they just did a one for 100 reverse and it's not the first time they did it several years ago they did a one for 40 so you're looking at a stock today that closed up 176 percent 31 up 1979 except that if you had to live through those two reverse, you would have a stock with an adjusted high of 21,480. So 31 up 20 is pretty nice, unless, of course, you own it at the equivalent of 5,000. So don't be fooled like by a lot of these. All right, uh, I'm going to let you go, and I'll be back first thing in the morning.